Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a doc. I made quite a number of videos last year looking at excess deaths and showing that the claims of anti-vaxxers that they are related to vaccines are false. But it's a new year and the anti-vaxxers are continuing to make the same false claims. So it's time for another video. And as luck would have it, there has recently been two new studies that provide further evidence that the claims being made by anti-vaxxers are wrong. So let's go back to the science and have a look at the first study. This is the first study. It's a prospective cohort study looking at the association of COVID-19 with short and long-term risk of cardiovascular disease and mortality. And they use patients from the UK biobank database as the source for their data. So what they did was they found people who had had a positive test for SARS-CoV-2 between the 16th of March 2020 and the 30th of November 2020. And the reason they chose these dates was because they only wanted people who had tested positive prior to vaccination. They then matched these people by age and sex to up to 10 people from a historical cohort and a contemporary cohort. And they also weighted the groups based on comorbidities, BMIs, ethnic groups and deprivation. The reason they chose both us historical cohort and a contemporary cohort was to make sure any difference they were seeing in adverse events and mortality were related to COVID and not some other aspect of the pandemic, like, for instance, overcrowding of hospitals. If there was an increase in adverse events of the contemporary cohort over the historical cohort, they would know that something else other than COVID could be responsible for some of the mortality and adverse events. They then followed these people up until the end of August 2021 for the infected and contemporary cohort and up to the end of August 2019 for the historical cohort. In terms of outcomes, they looked at two distinct periods of time with respect to infection. The acute phase, which was within 21 days of our positive test, and the post-acute phase, which was after 21 days until the end of the study. So let's look at the results for the acute phase first. Firstly, they found that COVID-19 patients showed a substantially higher incidence of major cardiovascular disease, as well as all-cause mortality compared with the two control groups. And in terms of numbers, for major CVD, which they defined as heart failure, stroke and coronary heart disease, there was a 4.3 times greater incidence compared with contemporary controls and 5.0 compared with historical controls. And when we look at all-cause mortality, there was a whopping 81.1 times greater incidence compared with contemporary controls and 67.5 compared with historical controls. In fact, the data showed an increase in risk for nearly every outcome measured. And I'll provide a link to the paper if you want to look at this forest plot in more detail. I will just point out a few figures that the authors thought were particularly noteworthy though. For stroke, there was a 9.7 times greater incidence in patients with acute COVID compared with contemporary controls and five times greater compared with historical controls. For atrial fibrillation, there was 7.5 times greater incidence compared with contemporary controls and 5.9 times greater compared with historical controls. And for deep vein thrombosis, DVT, there was 22.1 times greater incidence compared with contemporary controls and 10.5 times greater compared with 
historical controls. Now, of course, that data was for acute COVID in people who were unvaccinated at the time they caught COVID. Thankfully, a lot of people are vaccinated now and being infected with SARS-CoV-2 does not lead to the same increases in mortality for these people. So therefore, COVID is now having less of a direct effect on excess mortality. However, there is still an indirect effect. And that brings us to post-acute outcomes. In the 21 days to 18 months after SARS-CoV-2 infection, patients continued to show a higher incidence of major CVD as well as all-cause mortality compared with the two control groups. For major CVD, there was 1.4 times greater incidence compared with contemporary controls and 1.3 times greater incidence compared with historical controls. But for all-cause mortality, there was five times greater incidence compared with contemporary controls and 4.5 times greater compared with historical controls. So given how many people got COVID without being vaccinated first, it's not surprising that we are now seeing excess mortality. There is another important piece of information that can be gleaned from the study, however. As I previously mentioned, the study continued until the end of August 2021. This means that a large proportion of the people in the contemporary control group would have got vaccinated during the study period. If the vaccines are causing excess mortality, the all-cause mortality in the contemporary controls should be higher than the all-cause mortality in the historical controls. So let's have a look and see if that's the case. This information is available in supplementary table eight, but as you can see, it's a little bit hard to read. So I've pulled out the key columns so that the figures are a bit bigger. And as you can see, all-cause mortality is 7.8 cases per 1,000 person years in the contemporary group and 8.7 cases per 1,000 person years in the historical control group. So mortality is actually lower in the group that contains a high proportion of people who have been vaccinated but not infected compared with the group that doesn't contain anyone who has been vaccinated or infected. Of course, the difference isn't statistically significant. So the data isn't saying that getting vaccinated reduces or cause mortality if you're not exposed to COVID, just that it doesn't increase it. Also, if you look at the data, you can see that there isn't any statistically significant increase in the incident rate for any of the outcomes in the contemporary group. Now, there are some limitations to this paper. It is, of course, observational, and any study looking at the effects of COVID has to be observational and not randomised because, of course, it's unethical to deliberately infect people and see if they have any health consequences. And the other limitation is that it was done on an older age group, with the mean age being 66. The next new study, however, doesn't have this age limitation because it was done in people aged 12 and over. In this study, they looked at SARS-CoV-2 infection, hospitalisation and death in vaccinated and infected individuals by age groups in Indiana from 2021 to 2022. So what they did in this study is they identified people from Indiana who were infected with COVID who had not been vaccinated as well as people who had been vaccinated but who had never been infected. Then they searched for matches between the groups. And for each vaccinated person, they found a person who had been infected at around the same time, who had the same age, sex, race, zip code, and number of comorbidities. They then followed the people from 
30 days after the first vaccine or initial infection until February 2022 or until they were vaccinated or infected. That kept the two groups as just vaccinated or just infected. And they compared rates of infection, all-cause ED visits, hospitalisation and mortality. So let's have a look at each of the outcomes. Okay, if you're someone who is against COVID vaccines, you should take a screenshot now and not watch any further because it's all downhill from here. But this slide is the perfect slide to support your cause because it shows that vaccinated people are about two times more likely to have a positive test than people who have previously been infected, which means if you want to protect yourself against getting infected, you should get infected. Oh, hang on. That doesn't really work, does it? Oh, well. Also, before you get too excited about this strategy, it is worth noting that research shows that people who are vaccinated are more likely to get tested for COVID than people who are unvaccinated. So this could actually explain the difference. In this study, they asked people if they were likely to get a COVID test if they woke up with a sore throat. And they found that people who had had two vaccine doses were more than twice as likely to get a test than people who were unvaccinated. And as I promised, it's all downhill from here. Let's have a look at how vaccination and infection compare on the other outcomes. This slide here is looking at emergency department visits. And remember, this is not emergency department visits for COVID. This is emergency department visits for all courses. And zero months on the graph is 30 days after either vaccination or infection. As you can see, people who are infected are much more likely to have emergency department visits than people who have been vaccinated. And in fact, it's 24% higher in the previously infected compared with the vaccinated at six months. In this slide, we can see the figures for all-cause hospitalisation, and the trend is quite similar. In this case, all-cause hospitalisation is 37% higher in the previously infected compared with the vaccinated at six months. Finally, this slide shows mortality. And yet again, we can see that the incidence is much larger in the previously infected than in the vaccinated. At six months, mortality is 37% higher in the previously infected compared with the vaccinated. So as with the previous study, we can see an increase in mortality following infection with SARS-CoV-2. And it is clear that this mortality is much greater than mortality following vaccination. They also stratified the data by age group in the study. I won't show you all the age groups because it will get a bit boring, but I will show you the younger age groups as these weren't included in the previous study. This slide shows the data for ages 12 to 19. Chart A is infections, chart B is emergency department visits, chart C is all-cause hospitalizations, and chart D is all-cause mortality. As you can see, they follow a similar pattern as the complete data set, except for mortality, where there is a numerical increase in mortality in young people who are previously infected compared with those who are vaccinated, but it is not statistically significant. And overall, the mortality is very low in this age group. Remember, though, this is starting 30 days after infection. So the young people who have died from COVID are not included in the numbers. This slide shows the same charts for ages 20 to 39. Again, we see similar trends, 
But in this case, the excess mortality in those who have been infected with COVID is statistically significant. Although obviously the total mortality is still lower than for the older age groups. So from the two studies, we can see that COVID leads to excess mortality even after you have recovered from the acute infection for all ages above 20. And from the first study, we can see that there is no increase in mortality following vaccination. And remember, this is adding to all the evidence that has been covered in previous videos that also shows that vaccination is not associated with excess mortality. And I will provide a link to the playlist at the end of this video, which will be over up there or up there, one of those places. And that's coming up soon. I just need to do my standard blurb. So here goes. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.